gather in this place today. Holy Spirit, God, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. As we lay aside our own desire. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, and my dear children in Christ. A warm welcome to you to this Eucharistic celebration. And my dear people of God, today in our parish we are celebrating Catechism Day. Last week they just had their Catechism exams and today we have a short gathering for them. And this Mass is to thank God for the gift of faith that God has given us. One of the beautiful prayers in the scriptures is, Lord, increase my faith. Lord, increase my faith. And today, the best gift that we can give to our children is the faith that we have. And that is what will sustain our children through the ups and downs of life. All that we are learning, very good. We learn, we study well, we do everything. But what comes with us is the faith that we have and the faith that you have given. Today as parents, as godparents, as elders, a day to thank God for helping you to give that faith to your children, to our little ones. And very specially we thank our faith formation team. We have a wonderful team. And I always tell them whether I am in this church or not. That is what I used to say in the previous parish as well. Even when the diocese had not began the online classes, we started in our parish there with Monsignor Jainadin. 
and that is the first priority giving faith to our children and i always tell our faith formators even if i'm transferred we have a beautiful team continue that beautiful ministry that you have in the church forming our children in faith today we are here to thank god for the gift of faith that god has given us and the strength that god has given us to each one of us that we give that faith to our little ones as we pray for their intentions and we acknowledge and thank god for these beautiful gift not only to your family but to the church the church is happy with all of you today and the church is vibrant young and energetic because of you you're not only the future of the church but also the present of the church it is you who keep the church young energetic smiling and happy elders have lot of things to worry lot of things to concentrate on but they are happy people and they're joyful and they their presence fills the church with joy with happiness and it is said joy is the impeccable sign of the presence of the lord and as we are present with our little ones they remind us the presence of the lord in our midst and during last week during the retreat i was telling when i spoke of the modes of the presence of god during the eucharistic celebration i said jesus is present among you and you are the body of christ just as i lift the host and say the body of christ i can show my hands towards you and say the body of christ and the lord is present you are the mystical body of the lord let us participate in this sacrifice with that attitude that i am a member of the body of christ as we pray for the intentions of our children we pray for the intentions of all our faith formators and all those who are helping our children in this regard my dear brothers and sisters and dear children in christ how many of you are yet to finish your exams still writing finished still writing oh many of them here finished very good did not finish we are all praying for you we are all praying for you definitely you will do well and most of you have written your petitions and put it on the cross lord pass me in the exam i went through there are at least two to three intentions asking for bicycle you see the lord is running a shop also now every everything is getting connected to him now bicycle it was going through the intention and uh, no it was written and the parents okay kindly take care of the intention okay take care of the intention today we are celebrating the fifth sunday of the lent and as we just look back on the sundays of the lent every sunday the lord gave a beautiful message as we came and spoke to him last week in the retreat i told our people it is a beautiful conversation with the lord the entire mass is a beautiful conversation the lord is speaking to me and i am speaking to the lord and there isn't a single moment wherein the lord keeps quiet during the mass he is constantly speaking and i was discussing with the priest i was telling them he is so talkative even on the cross he was he was talking the lord was talking even on the cross he did not keep quiet even there because he loves talking to us and today what is that the lord is communicating to us what is that the lord wants to tell us and we need to listen and to respond whenever the lord talks we listen and respond we listen and respond when he spoke to the woman at the well the samaritan woman at the well he said i am the living water and the water i give you will become a spring of water in you and give life to you and we know how her life changed and she became an apostle she became an apostle of the lord she carried the good news she carried the good news i have met the messiah and we saw how blind bartemius last week and to him the lord said i am the light of the world i am the light of the world and the lord is our light and our way 
and today the lord is telling us i am the life giver i am the life giver a wonderful message from the lord and the gospel is enriched when we listen to the first reading of the day in the first reading of the day through prophet ezekiel the lord is saying something very beautiful the lord is telling his people israel i will open your tombs your graves and i will give you life so that you may know that i am your god wonderful words from the almighty he is telling through prophet ezekiel i will open your tombs and i only i can give life only i can give life why do i give life to you so that you may know that i am your god i am your god i will breathe my spirit over you and give you life we have seen the deaths of our loved ones we have cried over it we have wept bitterly or we have seen people crying and people telling them at least once you open your eyes and see once you get up once i want to talk to you we have seen people lamenting lamenting over the death of their loved ones but none of our voices can raise anybody to life none of our voices you cry how much ever you want you weep and you tell your my mother your my father your my child they will not respond but only to one person even the dead body will respond and in his sight there is no death at his word and prophet ezekiel says through prophet ezekiel the lord is saying i will open your graves and i will give you life so that you may know that i am your god and what the lord says in the book of prophet ezekiel is happening in the gospel of john in the gospel of john the lord opened the tomb of lazarus and said come out he gave life he gave life so that we may know that he is god but how many of them understood that he was god you know what this was the last miracle that jesus performed and after this he will be put to death next week we are entering into the passion week into the holy week this is the last miracle and all of them got ready we will put an end to this man how many of them were convinced that he opened the grave and gave lazarus life after four days martha says lord he would be stinking now and he says open it did i not tell you open it and he gave life and that becomes for them a moment to you know harbor their grudge and finish him off and none of them realize and the lord is saying so that you may know that i am your god i am your god and jesus opened the grave of, and this is not the first time the lord is giving life to someone this is not the first time Lazarus was not the first man that he received life from the Lord. And when we look at the gospel very closely, very closely when we look at the gospel and the gospel of John is very beautiful, very beautiful. The synoptic gospels, the gospel of Matthew, Mark and Luke gives an account of what Jesus did exactly. Mark will say Jesus got up, he lifted his hands and as a no he has seen it because peter mark was peter's disciple and peter was the beloved apostle of the lord and peter was explaining you know when you have seen something you will say every detail of what you have seen the dress that they were wearing the way they spoke and that is how the synoptic gospels are it is an account that they have seen and writing but in the gospel of john you will have so much of love hidden experience hidden and as we dig into the gospel of john there is so much that comes out so much of wealth for our faith that comes out and the way he begins his, uh, his gospel in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was god we will wonder what is this john is speaking it will just fly like that like an eagle like an eagle and when we get deeper and deeper into john what a joy that we get what a joy that we get and today as we get deeper into the gospel passage the pericope that we have just heard very beautiful and three lessons that jesus gives us today as we are about to enter into the holy week three lessons the first lesson is very beautiful 
Martha and the other sister sent a word to Jesus, Lord, the one whom you love is ill. And Jesus seems not to be responding. A word is sent, he is ill, the Lord is not going. The gospel says he stayed wherever he was for two days. And he said, he is ill, not for death, for the glory of God to be revealed. And after that, when he comes to know that Lazarus is already dead, already dead, he tells his disciples, come, let us go to Judea. I took the shorter version of the gospel, the longer version you have. Jesus says, come, let us go to Judea. Our friend Lazarus is sleeping. Our friend Lazarus is sleeping. Lazarus is already dead. The fact is, Lazarus is already dead. And when Jesus reached the tomb, it was already four days. Already four days. Lazarus is already dead, but Jesus is telling, Come, let us go to Judea. Our friend Lazarus is sleeping. For Jesus, even death cannot take away that friendship. Whether we are alive or dead, that friendship with the Lord continues. Very beautiful. If someone dies in our house, what will we say? When will the body come now? The body is taken to the church and the mortal remains will be kept. This is how none of us say our friend is coming to the church, we are going to meet our friend. For all of us it is like that. With death, we, whether we want or not, somewhere we agree that this relationship is coming to an end. With death, we say the body is in the church, the body is taken. But Jesus says, I am going to meet my friend Lazarus. He did not say, I am going to see the dead body of Lazarus. For him, even after death, that friendship continues. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. He did not say, I am going to see the dead body of Lazarus. I am going to meet my friend Lazarus. And nothing can separate us from the love of God. That is what Saint Paul says. What can separate me from the love of Christ? Life or death, nothing can separate. And he was convinced. St. Paul was convinced. Nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. Even if I die, in his sight I live. And my friendship with him continues. Continues. A beautiful relationship. And that is what the Lord says. He who believes in me, when he lives, even though he dies, he will live. That beautiful relationship that you have and I have with the Lord as we are alive, even when we die, that relationship continues. That continues. There is no end for that relationship. That doesn't end. That doesn't end. That is the beauty. That is the beauty. We remain the friends of Jesus forever. Forever. Dead body in our sight. But for him, he's sleeping. My friend is sleeping. And that is the second lesson. He is sleeping. For Jesus, in the sight of Jesus, there is nothing called death. It is for us. Even when he went to the house of Jairus, even before he reached the house, news was sent to him that the daughter is already dead. Why do you trouble the master? Why do you trouble the master? And he goes and he sees people crying and weeping and making a tumult. And the Lord said, why are you weeping and crying here? She is sleeping. She is sleeping. Same words what he said on Lazarus. He is sleeping. The girl is sleeping. Why are you making noise here? And everybody laughed at him and he gave life. To that poor widow's son at nine, he gave, he gave life. And today, our friend is sleeping. And in the sight of God, there is no death. That is why he says, I am the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. For him, there is no death. And everyone who believes in the Lord will never die. Will never die. Will live. And that beautiful relationship with the Lord lives forever. Lives forever. And the third beautiful lesson that we draw from the gospel of the day is that short verse, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Raising Lazarus to life was not a big thing for the Lord. He has already done it. He has already done it. 
That was not at all a big thing. Giving sight is not a big thing. Making the lame walk not a big, big thing. Making the deaf hear not a big thing for Jesus. At a word. At a word, he did it. Lazarus, come out. Talitha kum. Little girl, get up. And the girl got up. Lazarus, come out. He came out. He stopped the funeral procession and told the dead body of that boy, young boy, get up. And he got up. That is not big thing. But I'm even as I was meditating on the gospel, that is not something that catches my attention when the Lord tells Lazarus, come out. The attention is on Jesus weeping. Jesus wept. He is a God who is with me. He is a God not who looks at me weeping far away and say, I will come and work a miracle. Wait, don't worry. Not a God. He knew what he is going to do. He knew that he is going to raise Lazarus to life because he has already told Martha, do you believe that I am the resurrection and life? And she said, and again when he went to the tomb, she says, Lord, four days, why are you opening? And he is, asked, he is telling Martha, did I not tell you, if you believe that you will see the glory of God, then why are you talking again now? Keep quiet. Why are you talking again now? If you believe, you will see the glory of God. And Martha kept quiet. And open the grave. Open the grave. If I believe, the glory of God is waiting. Otherwise, no. Otherwise, no. And that, that glory will be revealed only to those who have faith. And the Lord says, for those who are in that beautiful relationship with me, I am not a God who will stand far away and see you crying. I am weeping with you. He knew that he is going to raise Lazarus to life, but then he could not see his loved ones in tears. And he, he was weeping there. Jesus wept. That is not a sign of weakness. Sometimes we think shedding tears is a sign of weakness. No, 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 not at all. Jesus wept. And at least three times he wept in the Gospels. At the tomb of Lazarus in Gethsemane, and again as he enters Jerusalem, as he enters Jerusalem, the gospel says he wept bitterly. And today's gospel, the gospel makes that point that he wept bitterly, not just doing like this. He wept bitterly. And Jesus weeps with us. He shed, sheds tears with us. That is the beauty. Raising Lazarus to life is easy for God. Is easy for God. But... God sitting with me and weeping with me is something marvelous and beautiful. And that is what that we need to carry home as we go. That he is a part of the thick and thin moments of my life. He is a part of every moment of my life. I am happy, he is there. I am sad, he is there. I face a death, he is there. I am happy, he is there. I am joyful, he is there. I'm, whatever I am doing, he was present even in the heart of his enemies. He was present even in the heart of his enemies. When scribes and Pharisees were thinking evil in their hearts, Jesus told them, why are you thinking evil in your heart? That means Jesus was present even in the heart of his enemies. He was present there. Otherwise, how will Jesus know that scribes and Pharisees were thinking evil in their heart? He is Emmanuel. He is Emmanuel. That he is present even in the heart of his enemies. If he is present there, how about us who call ourselves believers in the Lord? Very much present with us. Very much. We may be the most uh, no, wicked person. But the Lord is present there. The Lord is present. The Lord is aware of everything. The Lord is aware of everything. And today he is telling us, I am with you. Not as a spectator. Not as a spectator. But I am with you as your beloved friend. As your beloved friend. And let this beautiful relationship that has started with Jesus must grow and get strengthened and deepened. Nothing can destroy that relationship. Not even death can destroy it. But who can destroy it? We can destroy it. We can destroy it. Not even death can put an end to that beautiful relationship that we have with Jesus. Death cannot separate us. But who can spoil that relationship? I can spoil it. I can spoil it. Through my unfaithfulness. Through all that I am. And everything that takes me away from the Lord. I can spoil this beautiful relationship that I have with the Lord.
Nothing else. All the powers in the world put together cannot separate me from the love of Christ. But who can spoil it? I can spoil it. If at all, if my relationship is with Jesus is getting weakened, if, I'm get, if, if it is getting deteriorated, if I am getting away from the Lord, it is because of me and me alone. Nobody else is responsible. And the Lord today once again says, Though Lazarus was dead, for me he was still friend. He was not dead body. He was my friend. He was my friend. And today the Lord says, let that beautiful relationship that we have with Jesus, let it continue, flourish and bear fruits. Flourish and bear fruits. And may the Lord, the giver of life, give life to all of us. And today as we remember, as we meditate on this passage, we also remember all our loved ones who have gone before us to the Lord. That he is life. In his sight, they are sleeping. They are still alive. At his word, they will wake up. At his word, they will wake up. Little girl, get up and she got up. It is like we going and waking up someone who is sleeping. Get up and they get up. For Jesus, death is that. If I say I get, get up, they get up. And we remember all of them who lived with us, who have gone to the Lord before us. We tell the Lord, Lord, their friendship with you continues. Sometimes we may have lost that warmth of our loved ones who lived with us and have gone. But Jesus never loses that warmth with us. That friendship is never lost. And we tell the Lord, Lord, let that beautiful relationship with you continue. And let our relationship, let it get strengthened and become even more beautiful through this celebration of the sacrament. Yeah.